There is a secret to developing relationships and making friends. It is to remember what matters to them. Every time you chat or meet, they give you little insights about what they like, dislike, their interests, challenges, and so on. Your ability to recall and reference these things in subsequent conversations will make a difference in the way your relationships develop. But nowadays, we're all extremely busy. And you may talk to your friends every few months. How can you make sure you don't forget important things? Well, the good news is that you don't need a superhuman memory to be able to remember the details that matter. You just need the right system. Here is one way to use Obsidian and its plugin basis to manage and nurture your relationships. Most people track tasks, projects and grocery lists, but forget the most important thing to manage, which is their relationships. So in this video, I'll show you how to create a lightweight personal CRM that will help you be a better friend. It only takes three things. First of all, we need to stay organized. I've created a folder called Contacts. In this folder, we will place our contact notes, one per contact. What goes into a note? Well, I've got an example here. As you can see, it contains two main areas, the actual note about the person and some properties at the top. Let's review them quickly. The person note can be as extensive or details as you want it, of course. This is just an example, but I think the most important and typical areas to track would be an about section with basic information such as their address, name of partner and kids and so on. Then a section about their interests. These are generic things that maybe you've picked up in conversations and are unlikely to change often. They are probably subjects you can safely land on at any point during a conversation and they will be happy to chat about them. And finally, a third section about the all-important conversation log. Here you record brief summaries of your interactions, placing the most recent on top so you can check them before any new conversation. In this example, there is also a specific heading for how we met, which, if you like, counts as the first thing we should have captured in the interaction log. Of course, you can flex these sections in any way you want. For example, here there is a little tag for a gift idea, which may help you if you are ever invited to the birthday party. Anyway, my suggestion is to keep this note very simple. We're not looking for a detailed FBI file. We just need some pointers that can help us remember what they care about. The second part, less visible but equally important, is the front matter, which is this section at the top that contains some useful properties about the person. In this case, we have their birthday, the next contact date, which is basically when you want to contact them next. And when you contact the person, what will you talk about? Well, that's the content of the last property, which is the touch point, which really gives you a conversation started based on previous conversations. These two elements you update every time you have a conversation. For example, in this case, you may have had a call with your friend Derek on the 16th of November. And at the end of the call, you recorded some key points, such as his sister having a wedding and him being stressed about it and so on. Then you decided to call your friend back in about a month just to check how things went. So you updated the next contact property, setting it to a date which is a month away. And you also recorded the next touch point. How is the wedding planning going or something similar? It is important that you record these two elements immediately after a conversation so they are fresh in your mind. So how do you create a contact note for the first time? Now, let's create one for Derek's partner, Sammy. Well, first of all, I can create a link to that note by putting it in double square brackets. Then I click on it and an empty note will be created. And if it's been created outside of the contact folder, drag it to where it belongs, which is in the contact folder. Then I open the note, which is empty, of course, and I start typing three dashes. This activates the front matter and you can start selecting properties. Birthday, next contact and touch point. If this is the first time you create these properties, you simply start by typing their names, birthday, for example, or whatever. And then you click on the symbol and set a property type as date. Then add uh, the next property, which is next contact. You set it as a date. And finally, the touch point property, which is of text type. You can then go on and type whatever you want in the person's file. I've created a template for this type of entries, so I can click Command P on the keyboard and choose to insert a contact template. And this populates the file. By the way, you can even include properties in the front matter of your template 
So those properties are carried across too. Once you have your files in the correct folder, it is time to create a base and let it do the heavy lifting. You can call the palette with command P, then type base, create new base, and then you can give it a name, my contacts, let's say. Then you can move it to your contacts folder so everything is tidy. A base is basically a database that pulls all the nodes you have in your vault. So this initial list is likely to be very long, but we don't need that. So the first thing to do is to add a filter that only pulls files that are in the contacts folder. Then we choose which properties we want to see in our database. And there are quite a few available. We're all interested in the properties that we created. Birthday, next contact and touch point. And this is a good starting point already. You can sort by birthday or by next contact and see what should happen when. By the way, I have my base in this folder, so this shows up too. I don't want that, so I can add another filter to make sure it doesn't appear in the list. So I click on filter, add the new filter, uh, file name does not end with base. Now you just have a list of contacts. However, as this list grows, it will become overwhelming. So we can do something smarter using formulas like I did in this today view. With this view, it's easier to see just the people that I need to contact today, either because they have birthdays, on this day or maybe because I've planned to call them today. And also I can see the ones that I forgot to talk to and so I'm late. This way there is less clutter and the list becomes much more actionable. We can achieve this using formulas. First of all, you can create a new view by clicking on the view list and choose add view. Then let's add a filter. Let's set it to pick up files only from the contacts folder and also again ignoring the base file. Now we need to add a filter group like this one. So click add new filter group and set it to any of the following are true. Then click on this icon, if you can see it, to open the advanced filter. And let's type a little formula to check if it is their birthday. To do this, we need to check whether day and month match the current date. So here's the formula. Birthday.day equals today.day and birthday.month equals today.month. Notice the use of double equals to match and double ampersands to add an end clause. Then we add a new filter, click on advanced filter again, and then type the other property that we're looking for, which is next context. Again, this shows up in the autocomplete, so I can click on it and avoid spelling mistakes. And I will set this equal to or smaller than today. This filter will basically pick up notes that are due today or they were due earlier, which means that I was supposed to contact someone and didn't. Notice the different way Obsidian shows this property as it is made of um, two words. So it's in quotation marks and in square brackets indicating it's a property of the note object. I can now click outside and the new filter is already active. And as you can see, it shows fewer contacts. Someone that has their birthday today, someone I was planning to contact today, and also someone that I was supposed to contact earlier and didn't. In my case, I've also added a new formula that tells me at a glance what type of action I have to perform. Do I need to send them birthday wishes? In which case I also have their age. You know, this person, for example, is turning 43. Or do I need to call them for another reason? Or am I simply late? This action formula tells me exactly that. To add a formula like this, click on properties, add formula, and I'll show you the formula I've used in case you want to replicate it or maybe flex it. I will also place it in the description below so you can copy and paste it into your base. So once this is ready, I can open this view and see exactly who I need to contact today. And I can update the relevant information here. For example, once I call the person, I can click on their name and make changes to their file to log our conversation. Or I can make small changes directly in bases. For example, I could click on the touch point field and change it. Or maybe insert a new birthday by clicking on it and choosing the new one or a next contact date. The properties in the actual file change accordingly and very quickly. You can create new files directly from bases. You can click on new, type a name, and then add the information you want or maybe add a template. So this is a practical use of Obsidian and bases, which I hope you'll find useful. Drop a like if that's the case. For now, thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.